The Soul Redeemer, Book 2, Chapter 22C The three of them quietly sipped their tea. As Nicole contemplated what had just happened to her, the words that Jemima had spoken over her at the beginning comforted her. Joel, she interrupted the silence, what do we do now? It's been a long time since I felt like this. I thought I was done with little girls, but I think there's something else inside me and I don't understand. Jesus showed me the room in my mind that held boxes full of the past. It was empty of the past and full of new life. I didn't think there was anything left. So what's happening and why? He answered, Sometimes there are things that have been hidden so deeply that they would not be recognized without a searching. I believe that God brought you here for the completion of his healing work in you. There may be some memories that God needs to bring into your consciousness because remembering breaks down the programming. Are you willing to allow Jesus to open the door on these hidden things? Nicole considered and then agreed. Yes. If there is more that he needs to do, I will accept his work. Joel prayed. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you understand this. Holy Spirit, we ask that you illuminate the things hidden in the darkness and that you help Nicole to understand what you want her to know. Then, in an authoritative voice, he said, In Jesus' name, I command all demons that are protecting these memories from surfacing to come out of hiding and go into the pit and await judgment. Oh my goodness, Nicole gasped. Is it possible that the rocks are parts? I see that the first stack of rocks has fallen over and the middle rock has sprouted arms and legs. I see Jesus and he's moving rocks around. He's smiling at me and he says, He's rock gathering. Now he just moved the middle rock of the second stack away from its group and the top part of the rock has opened like a lid. I see a face coming out of that rock. I can't tell if it's a boy or girl. It has very short hair and is skinny like it's starving. And it's so white it looks like death. Joel listened intently then replied, it is common practice in Illuminati programming to dehumanize and hide certain altars within inanimate objects as fail-safes. That way, even if other altars are accessed or discovered, the fail-safes are not recognized as parts and are allowed to remain. Their undisturbed presence is an open door through soul ties for demonic spirits or the human spirits of the programmers to have continued access and influence over the slave, keeping them in semi-bondage. Well, Nicole said, I see the rock with arms and legs frantically running around screaming in fear. I feel her feelings and she's young and doesn't understand what is happening. I think that's the one that was just out a little bit ago. She's terrified. Nicole, Joel interrupted. Tell her it will be okay and that we are going to help her. She's not listening. Ask Jesus to come and help her. He's just letting her run. I do see joy, though, Nicole said. She's running around with the rock person, but she's not upset. She's happy. She's excited because I found them. But I don't understand that either. Joy is one of my other parts, and I haven't seen any of them in so long. I thought they were integrated. Why is she here? Ask Jesus, Joel said. He told me that he sent Joy because she can comfort the little girl. Joy says she's known about them a long time. This one is three years old. Hey, do you think the numbers are ages of the rocks, or rather the part of me that is inside them? Very possible, Joel said. Part of the dehumanizing process is to assign numbers to parts instead of names. You also need to understand that even though the numbers may represent parts, they have very significant meanings. Here again we see how Satan has perverted numbers that are sacred to the Lord. In the occult and Illuminati, there are six sacred numbers. The numbers 3, 7, 9 are among these, and they believe that when sacred numbers are grouped together, their power is intensified. Therefore, the number 21 is seen as powerful because 3 times 7, two sacred numbers multiplied together, equals 21. 
Nicole sat very still while considering what she was hearing. She felt as if another veil was being lifted from her mind, and while it wasn't exactly painful, it was very disturbing. It was more confirmation that her memories and the things she was experiencing now were reality. Sir, you mentioned the number nine. I didn't see or hear that number, Nicole said as she tried to find an excuse to deny reality. Ah, but you did, Joel countered. How many stacks of rocks did you see? Three. And how many rocks were in each stack? Three. Nicole closed her eyes as truth hit. And three times three equals nine. You're doing good, Nicole. Jesus is doing a work within you. Parts like these are buried very deep and are often close to the core person. They have been with you a long time. I'm going to talk to Jesus now, okay? Yes. Joel prayed, Lord Jesus, thank you for revealing truth in Nicole's deepest being. I am feeling a sense of urgency in this matter, and I would ask that you would expedite the healing and deliverance process now. Holy Spirit, I pray for angels to guard and protect Nicole and these others, and that Satan's plans will be thwarted. In fact, I praise you because we know that you have already overcome. Yours is the victory. In Jesus' name, amen. After a moment of silence, Joel said, Nicole, tell us what you are seeing, hearing, or feeling as you can. Jemima and I will each take one of these parts to pray over. Which part do you want to focus on, Jemima? I be taking the arms and legs. That one needs some big-time deliverance and true love. Fine. I'll take the middle one, Joel said. Nicole was barely aware of their presence as the Holy Spirit answered Joel's prayer with revelation. She explained what she was seeing and hearing. Three has gotten tired and is laying down. Joy is laying down beside her, and she is touching Three's index finger with her index finger. The contact seems to be comforting to her, but she's afraid of any more touching than that. She seems to feel that touch always turns to pain. <gasps> wow! Seven's out of the rock completely. She is saying that she's a girl, even if she doesn't look like one, and she's telling me that she wants long hair like mine. Joel said, can you ask her what her assignment was? I'm not sure if she's saying this or not, but I'm hearing, still, kill, destroy, still, kill, destroy. Nicole gasped, oh no, I just had a thought. Some of my things have been missing lately. If her assignment is to steal, maybe she's responsible for that. I forgot with everything that's been happening, but it seems that lately when I'm thinking about how much I like something, it disappears, like my favorite big spoon and even one of the pictures on the wall, gone. I've always been afraid that I would do something and not know. What if I've done something terrible? Joel saw Nicole's fear and agitation and said, Nicole, I want you to look up some scriptures. She reached over and took the Bible he handed to her. First, Satan perverts God's word. We know that Satan came to steal, kill, and destroy. But what is the last part of that verse? But I, Jesus, came that they might have life and have it abundantly, Nicole read. Yes, that's right, and I belong to him, and his life is in me. Peace began pushing away the fear in Nicole's heart. Now look up all the verses on rocks that you'll find in the concordance in the back of the Bible, and then tell me what the Lord Jesus says to you. Joel and Jemima looked as though they had fallen asleep, but Nicole knew they were praying. Five minutes later, she said, Okay, this is really good. Jesus is the rock, and Satan tried to pervert that truth with these false rocks of protection and hiding. Lord Jesus, please forgive me for trusting in false rocks, false truth. You are my true rock and my redeemer, and I claim Jeremiah twenty three twenty nine that says, Is not my word like a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? So, Jesus, please break all these false, false rocks into pieces with your hammer so that the only things within your kingdom of truth will remain. Nicole felt as if a great shaking were going on inside of her. She didn't see anything for a moment, 
and then when everything grew still she saw three free of her rock sitting on top of a hill looking out over the remains of crushed rocks seven was standing at the base of the hill also looking at what remained while they watched angels came down from heaven and stood near the crushed rocks jesus spoke to nicole then command the demons to reveal themselves nicole said in jesus name i command all you demons to reveal yourselves some of the chunks of rock began moving and taking on shapes seven explained that she and three were in the middle rocks but that the rocks on top and underneath of them were demon guards the demons assigned to three looked like imps not too big but very scary looking one was drooling and oozing goo all over its body. It stood looking at three while licking its lips like it wanted to devour her. The other was like a big, mean dog that would like to attack and tear her apart. Nicole saw that an angel had leashes on those demons and was holding them away from her. She heard three saying, I like the big, pretty angel, but I don't like those other things. Please make them go away. Out loud, Nicole said, In Jesus' name, three and I bind the evil one. We renounce giving place to you demons in our lives. You are defilement and destruction, and we bind you with the blood of Jesus and command you to take all your filth and destruction and leave us right now. Go wherever this angel is directed by God the Father to take you. Go now in Jesus' name. She could see that Jesus' blood was being poured over the demons and the angel was going up and pulling them up with him. They left the ground and were dangling in the air by the chains that were around their necks. They were struggling to get free and were choking as they went up higher and higher until they were out of sight. Joel said, Nicole asked three what her job was. She says that she was to be a sexual doorway, Nicole answered. She doesn't understand what that means except that she was supposed to stay hidden inside the rock and not let anybody find her. She had to be very quiet and she could never, never cry. When her arms and legs came out, she was scared because she thought she would be punished. Joel asked, who was she supposed to hold the door open for? Nicole began to shake as the truth began to dawn on her, and Three's memories began to penetrate the walls of dissociation within her mind. She answered, Uncle Marcus, I was maybe younger than Three when he started doing things to me. I remember things like watching a horror movie with my cousin and being so scared. He came into the room and turned off the TV and told my cousin to leave us alone, that he would comfort me. His comfort was sexually stimulating. And then, just when I was so aroused that it almost hurt, he tortured me with pain by sticking needles into me. It's like he used terror or fear, sexual stimulation and physical pain to... To what? To cause your mind to split, Joel said. That is a normal practice within occult-type programming. This may be the first splitting of your mind, the first altar. The number three is the first sacred number and is often used as an occult signature to mark or claim a person or an event. At the same time, they layer in demons, which act as guides, spies, and disciplinarians. The purpose of the split and the demons are to create soul ties that hold the door open for the master, in this case, Marcus, along with his successor, which would be Damon. These first splits are so close to the core person that these are the ones they dehumanize and usually hide in inanimate objects so that they won't be recognized. And these are the foundation on which to build a structure of other parts. This type of programming is usually preparation for the rituals and trauma that follows but sometimes they allow it to lay dormant for many years before reactivating it. Wait, Nicole exclaimed, what did you say about Damon? Joel looked at her thoughtfully for a moment. Ah, this is new information for you. Yes, Damon is Marcus's successor. That means that when Marcus died, all of his demons and soul ties were transferred to Damon. He became the handler of the slaves or victims with important functions that were still in operation when Marcus died. 
Nicole closed her eyes and tried to keep up with the thoughts that were flooding her mind. Jesus, please help me understand this if I need to, she prayed. Thoughts of the night that she had been raped by I.S. came back to her. Joel, is it possible that Damon could have astral projected and raped me while I slept? He looked down at the open Bible on his lap, then back up into her eyes. Yes, it is, with the help of demons. Like Incubus Succubus, she asked. Yes, exactly. Okay, then, she said. Instead of fear, understanding was bringing a sense of relief. I, yes, was the strong man in my life. I wondered how there could be signs of a physical presence when I was raped in the night by an unseen force. That was probably Damon and I.S. Three and the demons assigned to her were holding the door open for them. Is this right? It fits with programming protocol, Joel answered. Sometimes these deepest hidden parts are what we call sleepers. They are usually inactive and are seldom assigned to everyday jobs. In order for them to wake up, so to speak, they have to be activated. Joel was quiet a moment, then asked, Nicole, what do you remember of the night you were raped? Nothing, she answered. I wasn't aware of anything unusual until I woke up. Are you willing to investigate that night a little closer? She nod nodded her head warily. Yes, if it's important. I believe it is, he said. I know that it is not pleasant, but truth brings freedom, he reminded her. I agree with that, Nicole said. Jesus, I give you the keys of that memory to unlock if you want to. Then Joel prayed, Lord Jesus, I ask that if this is important, that you would illuminate your light on the darkness. You know which part of Nicole holds these memories, so please break down the dissociation so that she's able to know what happened. I hear three saying she's sorry, Nicole said. She didn't want me to be hurt. I forgive you, Three. We will make sure that you're safe from now on, and then I'll be safe too, okay? If you remember what happened that night, I need you to give me those memories. You've done a very good job of keeping those things from affecting me, but now if we want to get better and be free, we need to work together. Yes, you are free of the rock already in those demons, but I'm not free because you are really part of my mind that has been broken off. I'm broken. When you give me your memories, then Jesus will be able to heal our mind together. Yes, like Humpty Dumpty was broken. That's right. Nobody could put him together. But Jesus is God, and he can put us together. Nicole had closed her eyes, and she was hearing a chant. Awake, awake, O oh sleeping one, ready or not two. Here we are at invincibility three. The words one and two had been emphasized, but when she heard three, Nicole suddenly bolted upright in her chair like she had been called to attention. She saw two dark figures that merged into one and heard the man say, I love my job. Just lay back down. That's right. Okay, let's get you activated. Give me a butterfly. Nicole screamed in terror as she remembered the violation of her body and soul. It was reminiscent of the memories of Uncle Marcus and I.S. at the ritual. Jemima drew close praying, but didn't touch her. Joel said, Nicole, can you hear me? When she didn't answer, he called out to her again, Nicole, this is only a memory. It is not happening now. You are safe. Do you understand? Nicole took a couple of deep breaths as her body began to relax. She sat back in the chair and said, Yes, I understand. You were right. I heard him say something about activating me. It was like he was counting, and he said invincibility right before he said three, and he said something about a butterfly. What does all this mean? Joel explained, invincibility is used as a code word that activates the failsafe. In this case, three. They believed that her programming made them invincible. Butterfly is a code word used in programming that accesses certain parts and prepares them to follow the given command. Nicole was lost in thought, then said, The morning after it happened, Jesus told me that I.S. had planted seeds of destruction in me, so I took authority over that, and his plans were thwarted. 
but I had no idea about Damon until he came to Samaria. She paused, thinking, So when I fell under Damon's spell, it was because three had been activated and her soul ties were with him were open doors influencing and drawing me to him. After my encounter with Damon and Dorothy, Jesus told me that there were still some ties. That must be what he meant. I had forgotten about that until right now. I guess Three's activation didn't bring about their desired results either. Joel answered, that's right. I guess lost his power over you and the demons assigned to Three were just peons without a leader. And you were strong in your love and commitment to Christ. The assignments or jobs of the splits or parts were undermined by that because they are still a part of your mind.